Hey home builder, John here, your friendly remote CPA. And I just wanna walk through a quick video about setting up QuickBooks for the first time if you've never done this before. So I just went to quickbooks.com and this is the pretty standard page and they do a pretty standard offer of some kind of discount off of your subscription for the first three months. Now, if you work with an accountant or a bookkeeper who's a pro advisor, you might be eligible for an additional discount. Sometimes they give us a 50% discount that we can pass on to you for the life of your subscription. The pricing does change regularly, but the packages do not. Um, they tend to be pretty similar. So let's just do a super quick overview of each one and what I think of them as. So the simple start, um, wow, that used to be $7.95 per month. I see it's up to $15 a month. This is gonna be bare bones minimum. Uh, the one thing that's unique about simple start is it used to be the only one that has a uh, mileage module in it. So if you're only on your own, you're a solopreneur, and you want QuickBooks to track your mileage, this is the one you have to pick. However, I find that most business owners want to track their mileage, but they need the features of the more upgraded QuickBooks plans. So that's where there's some other apps, such as Mileage IQ, that you can get as an add-on. The only thing I caution with these apps is you want your business mileage to be the majority of your driving because it will ask you to classify each and every time you get in the car, whether or not you're driving for personal or business. So it, for me, I ended up uninstalling it just because I don't drive nearly as much for business as a home builder does, but um, it is available. So with essentials, um, you start getting a few more features. Oh, actually, wow, they have uh, they seem to have mileage tracking on all of them. So uh, that's new. I wonder if it's the same module, um, TBD on that. Um, essentials is where things start to get uh, more interesting. Um, and for a lot of home builders, this plan might work. Um, interestingly enough, the differentiating factor between Essentials and Plus used to be the budget module, which is one of my favorite modules in QuickBooks because it allows you to create a budget for your company. So I would recommend making a budget in QuickBooks for your overhead costs. That includes like your office rent, office supplies, utilities, travel, meals, things that cannot be directly allocated to a job. And then the job by job budgets will just be in builder trend. But ironically enough, my favorite feature, the budgeting is not even listed on here. So I'm not really sure what's going on as far as that goes. And then finally, um, we have advanced. And the biggest differentiating factor here is that it includes up to 25 users. So that would be for a home builder who has quite a team. Um, and otherwise, um, so it used to include backup and sync. Uh, so that would allow you to copy your data to another QuickBooks file. So sometimes we have a situation where uh, if you want to um, change QuickBooks files, you have to upgrade to advanced so you can access that backup and sync, and then you can copy it to a new QuickBooks file and downgrade. Um, otherwise, if you keep the same QuickBooks file, you should be able to downgrade just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and go with the plus because I wanna make sure that we have access to the budget. Um, so my experience with QuickBooks payroll honestly has not been awesome. It's fine if you just have a few employees that you need to uh, get set up on a routine and they don't have any complicated issues like child support or garnishments um, and you pretty much want it to be on auto pilot. Um, however, there's another payroll provider called Gusto that advertises more of a sync with Builder Trend. So that's the one that we've gravitated toward. If you do go with QuickBooks Payroll, I would recommend trying to go with 
probably something that's a little more uh, concierge, like the elite, so that you can have someone you actually talk to. And payroll can be a nightmare uh, getting set up. I recommend allowing at least a week, maybe 10 days for everything to go through if you're getting it set up for the first time because you're going to have to register for tax ID numbers. They're going to have to verify your bank account. And sometimes it really is nice to have a human being that you can talk with through that process. And if you miss even so much as one quarterly form 941, or if you have a mistake on your 941, I hate to say this, but it could take a number of quarters before it's truly corrected. And the last thing I'll say about payroll is if you are thinking about making a switch in your payroll provider, I highly, highly recommend only switching payroll providers at the very beginning of the year. So you'll want to finish out your year with one payroll provider, even if it means, for example, if uh, your your pay period goes December 16th through the 31st, and then that payroll process is on the 1st, I would move that January 1st payroll up. I would move it earlier so that it still processes in the current year because if you have so much as one pay run where it there's you know you're using two different payroll providers within a year um you're going to end up with a situation where they're both going to want to file the 941 and then the irs isn't sure which one to use and neither of them are going to want to work together to combine the 941 so Do your best to finish out one year completely. Allow the old payroll provider to generate those final W-2s for the preceding year. And then start with your new payroll provider for the first pay run in January. It has the potential to save you a lot of headache. So I'm going to continue without payroll. um, And I'm going to... I haven't heard the best about the live bookkeeping at $50 a month. I can't imagine you get very much. Um, So I'm going to create my Intuit account and I will be back. Okay, so I just entered my billing information and I created a new Intuit account. Uh, So we're going to go through the setup process together. Uh, There's always some welcome screens and uh, we'll call our business remote CPA home builders um, and let's see we'll say that we're just getting started uh, the other options might prompt you to do an upload of your data so if you have some data um, you can upload it um, we'll say yes um, we'll say three to five years and um, we'll say Yes. Um, And just know that once you say you're an LLC, you also have the option of indicating you're you're an S Corp, um, which in most cases will help home builders. So you can start your business as an LLC and then make an S Corp election later. Um, We'll say home building. Let's see. I don't think they have anything that specific. Uh, new housing for sale builders. We'll try that. And we'll say that we're the owner. And um, we'll say, we'll just start out with contractors. Uh, We'll say no. Uh, They'll invite you to bring your bookkeeper in, which is great. Um, I'll say not right now. And we use Builder Trend. Uh, what do you want? So, um, sure. Um, we'll hold off on accepting payments because we can utilize Builder Trend for that. Um, and then that's about it. Um, you can change those options later. It doesn't impact the package that you go with. Uh, we'll skip the payments. So this might be great for some people. Um, and we will want to link the bank feed eventually, but we'll skip that for now. 
Um, and hopefully you're saving your receipts digitally. Um, and they do have the QuickBooks app has the ability to submit receipts. Um, it's just not all the way there yet. It's not really what I'd like to see. So that's why we still gravitate toward Dex Prepare. The problem with the receipt functionality is it seems to go into a holding place and it's quite cumbersome to get it to actually map or match with the bank feed. Um, so here we are. Um, we are in your QuickBooks file for the first time. Um, they have the setup checklist. Um, then they have some other shortcuts. I will say this is one of the screens that seems to vary quite a bit from QuickBooks file to QuickBooks file. And always keep an eye out for these tabs that are here at the top. They've got a few different things. Um, and what we're not seeing is the old fashioned dashboard. So I think when we complete some of the setup features, we will eventually see that dashboard. So the last thing I'll mention as far as getting set up is you can come over here to the left and you can invite an accountant. You just want to check with them to make sure you're getting the same email address that they use as their Intuit login. And that's really helpful because it does not count as one of your designated users. Now, if you do want to use, if you do want to invite additional people at your company, say for example, you have an office manager or someone else that you want to give access to, uh, you can come up here into the gear icon and go to manage users. And that's how you can um, add people at your company. And then you can also see which accountants have access to your file. And you can inv invite um, multiple accountants. So maybe you have an external bookkeeper and then you have a separate EA or CPA who does your taxes and they both need access to uh, your QuickBooks file. You can do that. So as far as getting set up, um, next I would head over to transactions and here's where you can connect a bank feed account. You can also upload transactions manually. I find this to be a lot less common, but there can be a use case for it. And we will have to talk about the bank feed in depth later. Just know that it's often a trap. A lot of people get tricked by the bank feed. It's advertised as a simple tool where you can add transactions from. The problem though is in order to sync with Builder Trend, we always have to map to products and services. And as of this recording, QuickBooks does not allow you to uh, add things from the bank feed and indicate a product and service. So if you don't indicate a product and service, that means that you're booking to an expense category and that will never show up in Builder Trend, which will do you a huge disservice if you cannot see job related costs in Builder Trend. And as mentioned, um, there's a few other tabs up here. At this point, you can get uh, into Reconcile uh, close to the bank feed. It's changed names a few times. It used to be called the bank feed. Now it's transactions. Um, and then we'll be talking about some of the rules. So these can be helpful um, if uh, they are company transactions, not necessarily related to a job. If they're related to a job, it can be difficult to set up rules because you might move on to a different job at some point. And then funny enough, uh, so recently they did off, they did add a budget button over here on the left. Previously, the budget feature was the best kept secret. You had to come up here to the gear icon and you would have to get into it from here. Um, this is great. It allows you to upload a budget. Um, it can be a little bit tedious. There's not a great upload function at this time. And if you make a budget for your company for the year and you enter it here, it will automatically divide it by 12 for each month. I try to recommend that people break their budget down by month so that they know exactly what their income is going to look like over the course of the year. Maybe they're seasonal. Maybe they have a little bit less work in the winter. So it's great to break down the budget by month if you can. A few other things that you should be aware of. 
Uh, another favorite feature is the audit log. So when you do invite other people in to work with you on your QuickBooks file, you can see exactly what they've done. Um, so a lot of these things are just the account getting set up. So it was completed by system administration, but you can see all of the other events in here as well. And another commonly overlooked feature is the ability to close and lock your books. So I recommend getting into a really routine month end close process and you can come in here to advanced and you can turn on the close the books function and you can enter a closing date. I recommend going month by month. So as soon as you close out one month, enter the last day of that month here and protect it with a password. So if you have an office manager or a bookkeeper in here, they cannot go back in time and change things. This could be a simple mistake. Someone might choose the wrong year and accidentally edit something from a long time ago and mess up all of your reconciliations. And unfortunately, um, it can also be a source of fraud. So sometimes uh, fraudsters have been known to write themselves a check and bury it in your accounting records by dating it, you know, sometime years ago. And so it makes it a lot more difficult to find. So it really is a good idea to close and lock your book books. And then um, another thing is you can change uh, the amount of time for a logout from one to three hours. So if you want to keep this tab open and you might not need to be in here actively all the time, but you want it to be available when you come back to it, you can change your logout time to be three hours. Okay, so we've wrapped up this module about how to just open a QuickBooks account. And next, we'll talk about an overview of the features of QuickBooks herein. Talk soon.